Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, let's take a look at exporting our projects uh, for sharing them online. So I've been exporting a lot of my projects and, and sharing them on, on GitHub, Thingiverse, all those repo sites. And I've been uh, coming up with uh, different issues when exporting designs. So um, one of the cool things about Fusion is that you can uh, sort of share a public link. And this makes it so that folks can download your designs. It makes it really easy uh, for me to share my designs. This isn't shared yet, so all you have to do is check this box, share the latest version with anyone using this public link. And the cool thing about that is whenever I do an update, whenever I update this design, that link just gets updated. It automatically uh, pulls in the latest thing from the cloud and it, uh, it generates those, uh, those things for you. Now I'm supposed to get a link here. However, it's not showing up yet. That's kind of funny. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer than usual. Um, but this is kind of a, a very long process. Like it just came up here, it took a little bit. I guess the servers were slow. But if we do get this link. I'm going to copy the link. And when you put it in your browser, you can view it. You can see animations. You can explode the model. You can do all those sort of things, um, which is really great. That's really cool. But the problem is that when you try to download this design, there's sort of a couple steps you have to do. So there's a big download button here, and they give you you know tons of different options. If you want to download the Fusion 360 archive, that's the one you want that has all the things, um, including the timeline. So when you click on that, it'll actually ask you for your email. You type in your email, and then uh, you wait for the email. You download the, 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 the file that it gives you, and then you have to import that file into Fusion in a new project. Bit of a process, right? It's not easy for folks to kind of distribute their designs. It is easy for me, but it's not easy for the other end to actually download it. This thing's still trying to load, by the way. It's just a lot going on here. I had to pick the best time to do a layer by layer, huh? When uh, all the servers are down. Anyway, it, it is here and it's interactive and you can explode it. And I, I you've probably seen this before. I, I, I've i kind of shared about it a little bit here and there. Man, that thing's huge. It's a big assembly. So let's take a look at how to export this out through Fusion. Um, without having to kind of go through this workflow here of like download, import, enter your email, that sort of thing. So I'm going to uh, close this. And normally what happens with these designs that have a lot of components is that uh, you'll get this. So I'll right click on the main assembly and say export. From there, um, you can choose what file type. I'm going to go with the Fusion file. And then you pick where you want it. I'm going to pick uh, somewhere here. And then um, you'll hit save. And the problem is you might get this error here where it says local export is not supported right now for distributed design. So what does that mean? Well, from what I can tell, it basically means that you can't export um, assemblies that have linked designs, linked components. So if we take a look at my electronics component, inside there I have a whole slew of imported components. So these are linked, and I can tell they're linked because you can see that little link icon there on the folder right next to the little icon. And the problem with that is, uh, well, the good thing about having a linked design, the whole point of it is that if you ever need to update any of these components, um, you, when you update them and save them uh, in their individual component, um, when you uh, save it, this design will um, search uh, for the latest version of this linked design. And it'll basically say, hey, this is out of date, update it, because you updated it, if you did or not. If you didn't, it just will just sit there. However, the purpose is to reuse these components over and over again. And if you ever need to make a change, all of your things, all of your designs that use that one component will be updated, right? That's really good in theory, but in actual practice, there is haven't been a single moment where I had to update uh, a component because these are real components. It's a real potentiometer, and the potentiometer is not going to change um, anytime soon. It's a pretty much exact representation of the real potentiometer in real world space. Um, and we have a bunch of those, a bunch of components. They're not changing. If they do change, well, then that's a different component. It's a new product. It's a new new item that I have to model, not you know, not change the existing one because it's still a, a, you know an actual component. Anyway, so how do I do this? How do I export this out? I need to basically break all of these links, and you can do that simply by coming in here, right click, and break link. So when you do that, what Fusion will do will basically um, capture and import all of the features. Um, that went into that component that went into modeling it and it'll basically uh, create a uh, it'll basically import all those all those features inside of your timeline so if we go to my timeline now I have this new group which is a set of features collapsed into this group so this group here is actually all the things that are 
uh, pertaining to this uh, assembly, this, uh, this linked component that I have. Problem with this is that this has linked components itself. So now I have to come in here, right click and break the link for each individual component which sounds like a lot of work and it, and it, it sorta is, but it sorta isn't at the same time um, because this is just definitely uh, something that, you, that I uh, am getting in the habit of doing of just importing uh, or actually not even import, but just breaking the links. However, before I even start designing, I, I basically now just break the link as soon as I import my component because it just doesn't make sense to keep it linked. Uh, like I said, uh, I won't be changing the potentiometer. If I do, it's gonna be a different potentiometer and that needs to be a new component. Um, so uh, it does, doesn't make sense to have linked components for me anymore. So I'm going to stop doing this. Um, they they will be components that are imported that just won't be linked. They're just going to be broken. Uh, so one of the things I found when breaking the link, sometimes you can have some errors um, that will happen. And what I find is that some one of the best things to, to alleviate any type of errors is to step back in your timeline to the point of which that component was imported. Now, for me, I got into this habit of importing all my components at, uh, in, in a sort of at once. So if you look here in my timeline, you see all these linked components. That's basically me bringing in all the, all the electronics, bringing in the potentiometers, the cables, the motors. All of that stuff gets brought in before I actually design anything. And then I actually start designing anything uh, and then kind of using joints to position all the, all the components. So I can roll over to this point in history and this is before I've designed any of my enclosures. All I have here is just the imported components. So now I can come in here and just kind of break the link for each individual piece. Um, and I think that'll help Fusion a lot because now it doesn't have to calculate all these things going back and then going forward in time. Just do everything when you imported everything here. So uh, let's keep, uh, you can't do a, a, a right, you know, a shift click and then uh, do multiple uh, items at once. You have to do one each at a time, which is, kind of sad, but you have to do it that way. And depending on how big the component is, it might take a little bit longer than necessary. So I'm just gonna come in here and keep breaking links for all of the components here. And as you see, uh, Fusion will do its best job to kind of collapse, uh, to consolidate all these into a group, into a set inside your timeline. So that's kind of nice. So the next one is this one, break link. And you can see all these getting uh, turned into uh, those uh, um, those groups and you can see all of the uh, of the features that went into making that component break the link um, so this will make the file a little bit heavier because it has to contain all of these new sketches all these new bodies when it was a when it was when it is a link like this when it is a linked component it, I think fusion doesn't have to do a lot of work because it's just referencing it as opposed to actually having it in the file because uh, I noticed when you have these type of um, linked components, you actually can't really mess with them, you can't manipulate them, you can't even turn off layers. As you can see, I can't even turn off the bodies. It's basically locked because it's a referenced component. And in this case, I'm not even using this component, but I'll show you something kind of interesting. I'll Let's say I have this linked component and um, I kind of forget that it's in there. So I'll go forward in time. Fusion's gonna have to recalculate all the things that I made, all the projections. Not too long, there it is. It seems to be fine. There's no errors in my timeline, which is great. However, uh, let's say um, you know, uh, let's say that this was a working model and I need to use this. So if I break the link here, uh, what's gonna happen is I think I'm gonna get an error, or at least it did in the rehearsal. Um, so Fusion's gonna compile all of the um, components and it looks like I didn't get an error this time. I did when I first did this. Oh, I know why, because I actually deleted it. So let's say I have a component and I want to delete it. Um, problem with that is that if you're referencing it, it'll kind of air out. So I have the stepper motor, I'm going to delete it. It says this feature is being referenced by another feature in the timeline. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yeah, I'm sure. I don't know what this thing's talking about. What it should say is like, hey, you know, it should tell you exactly which sketch is, you know, referencing what and whatever. This error here kind of tells you it's sketch one, projection one, but I don't know where that is. Where is sketch one? What is sketch one? I have a hundred sketch ones. Why don't you tell me which one it is? You click on it and it tells you which one it is. So you can click on it and it kind of gives you an idea of where it is. So I know it's in this area here. It'd be nice if I could uh, right click on it and immediately alleviate it or say just delete the reference because I don't need it anymore. So it's basically inside of the enclosure, inside of the bottom, and it's one of these um, sketches here that is referencing it. 
However, it's also in the timeline here in yellow. I'll just right click. You can review the warning again, which doesn't really um, alleviate the problem, but it gives you a clue as to what it might be. Again, it's an edge that's missing. Right click, edit, sketch, and then you'll find out that it's actually a yellow. Um, it's colored yellow, the warning. And you'll see that it's actually a, a, a projected circle that was a projected from the basically from the thing we deleted, which is a stepper motor. One way to de one way to remove it is just to simply delete that. But if you need to maintain uh, this uh, this profile, you can you can just click on that little projection icon. Uh, if you zoom in on it, it just gets smaller and smaller. It doesn't actually change. It's actually when you zoom out that it becomes bigger. But anyway, you click on the you click on the yellow. You click on the actual projection icon, then you delete it, and that will delete the uh, relationship between the projection, and it's fixed. And then you can uh, apply some sketches to it and lock it in place, because right now it can move around. I don't think I'm using that sketch, so I could just leave it as is. As long as I delete that thing, the warning goes away, which is what we want. And um, that's it. So that's one of the problems that you can run into if you break the links and you're trying to export everything. So uh, we exported everything out. Um, all the electronics have been uh, broken the links. And now what we can do is we can right click on the master assembly, export, and hopefully that works out. So uh, as a fusion uh, file, that retains the timeline, the sketches, everything, the cam, where, uh, tool paths, animations if you have them, that all gets saved here. So I'm gonna hit export, save. Now fusion doesn't give you a prompt, doesn't say, hey, the export was done. You just have to double check your file, make sure it's there. Um, and it is, it's here. I saved it out. It's about six megabytes because it contains quite a bit of data. And then you can, of course, export it out as a, as a step file, which I'm doing a lot. A step file is a, is a great uh, format for lots of different solid modeling applications like SolidWorks, for example. Uh, so step files are great because they retain the original solids. However, they don't retain the sketches or uh, the timeline step file doesn't contain those, but it does have the original solids, so you can modify them, which is really great. Uh, a lot of the files that I get from, um, you know, the internets or even McMaster Car plugin, they're all step files because they work really well here. Um, so that's how I export my uh, my designs. That's how you can export your uh, your designs that aren't distributed, whatever they call it. And I it's basically the workflow now. And uh, I have to get into that habit of breaking the link as soon as I get in here. Again, for my particular case and my particular projects, um, uh, it just works out for me to do that. Um, so importing definitely works. Just breaking those links, so um, I don't have those relationships anymore, and I will will run into less times. Um, less less time it, it takes less time to export my stuff now if I if I do it this way so I thought I'd show you guys that and the other thing I want to promote is that all of our CAD files are now on GitHub as step files as STLs and as Fusion 360 files these are the individual components that make up our master you know our, our enclosures so the feather M0 Wi-Fi an amplifier batteries um, potentiometers, cables, arcade buttons, battery holders, all those sort of things. Uh, we have it here in our GitHub um, page here. So Adafruit uh, slash Adafruit CAD parts is where you'll find them on GitHub. All the files are here. Uh, GitHub has a little STL viewer, which is nice. Um, but uh, for the most part, there's just step files and the Fusion 360 files. So that's where you can find them if you want to use any of these components. Um, feel free to do so, and if you want to contribute, you can also uh, do one of the uh, the poll requests if you'd like. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.